So I'm sure that most people in my audience will remember when Joe Biden said this. And so the younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. <laughs> no, no. I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. Because here's the deal, guys. We decided we were going to change the world, and we did. That irritates me so much. Um, and I still get pissed off when I hear him say that because it's like, how dare you say that about millennials, that you don't have any empathy for us. You've been in power for the entirety of our lives and you've done nothing for us. You haven't done anything to improve our lives. So how dare you tell us that you have no empathy for us when we complain about how worse off we're going to be than our parents. We're inheriting a rigged economy that disproportionately benefits elites and the rich. We are also inheriting a dying planet that we have to be the ones to save if we even want to have a future at all. And when I talk about these things, when I talk about the economic woes that plague the millennial generation, I'm not just being hyperbolic because the Young Invincibles, which is a DC-based think tank, actually crunched the numbers and found that millennials earn approximately $10,000 less annually than baby boomers, which is a 20% change overall. Now, additionally, Young Invincibles also found that declines in education levels have changed so drastically between now and then that, quote, young people today that have a degree with debt earn roughly the same as young workers with no degree in the late 1980s. But additionally, as Cheat Sheet explains, on average, millennials pay 150% more in tuition than baby boomers, so we pay more for our our degrees that are worth less and it's not just education the average cost of weddings went up by 24 percent the cost to purchase a home increased by 294 percent and the cost of food has also increased substantially even when accounting for inflation also, contrary to popular belief, millennials are not lazy. We are now the largest generation in the U.S. labor force, and productivity continues to increase even though we have a very large presence. However, wages have not kept up with productivity, meaning we're working harder for lower wages, generally speaking, and prices keep increasing. But nonetheless, one particular author in the New York Times, a conservative named Brett Stevens, got a gigantic hard-on when he heard Joe Biden say that, and it inspired him to write this article in the New York Times titled, Dear Millennials, the feeling is mutual. Joe Biden dares to take offense at those who specialize in being offended. So you really don't have to read the article to predict what it's about. It's going to be another one of those vacuous, pretentious millennial bashing articles where it talks about how offended we are, how triggered we are, we're SJWs, we're always complaining, we're lazy, and also it's implied that we hate old people, but the feeling is mutual. All that millennials are saying when we whine is that, hey, maybe we have a life that is comparable to our parents economically and environmentally. But nonetheless, this jackass here is really excited about the fact that Joe Biden decided to bash us. And since Joe Biden took a shit on millennials, he's going to write this article not only praising Joe Biden, but also saying how horrible millennials are. So here's what he says. In this election cycle, no faction on the Democratic side more richly deserves rebuking than the one Biden singled out, which is not, of course, anywhere close to the entire millennial generation, roughly 80 million strong, or their younger siblings in Gen Z. But it is that part of these younger generations that specializes in histrionic self-pity and moral self-righteousness, usually communicated via social media with maximum snark. So in other words, he doesn't like us because he probably gets ratioed and dunked on via Twitter. So he sees how snarky we are and how clever our memes are. And, you know, he doesn't like all the dank may -mays that he sees. So, you know, fuck millennials, right? Because they make fun of me. Okay, but really, what is it? What bug flew up your ass that made you hate millennials so much? Like, why is it that you dislike them? Well, if you had to take a guess why he hates millennials, what would it be? SJWs. That's essentially what this is about. He cites three different examples of college students protesting speakers or professors on campuses. Um, he cites one example of a professor being assaulted and decided to use that as evidence that our entire generation is complete and utter garbage. We're SJWs. Well, first of all, 
Um, needless to say, people on college campuses who protest, who you deem SJW, that is not a sample size large enough to reflect general applicability. That doesn't represent everyone. And furthermore, let's say that every single millennial was the stereotypical blue-haired SJW. Is that really worse than what a lot of Republicans and people in power now represent? Complete and utter cronyism? Corrupt to the core? Unwilling to take action on climate change, an issue that could literally lead to our extinction? Is that worse than people who are outraged on college campuses? I'd argue no. But nonetheless, he hates the SJWs. He's choosing to jump on the anti-SJW uh, bandwagon about two to three years too late because I think that bus has already left. People are moving on now to something else. Um, but nonetheless, he really just hates millennials because we're SJWs. So he adds, the signature move in each of these instances, and there are so many more, is to allege an invisible harm in order to inflict an actual one. In place of an eye for an eye, we have professional destruction for emotional upset. Careers and reputations built over decades come to ruin, or nearly so on account of a personal mistake or a disfavored opinion. All of these struggle sessions play to the sound of chortling 20-somethings who have figured out that in today's culture, the quickest way to acquire and exercise power is to take offense. That is easy to do because the list of sins to which one may take offense grows with each passing year, from the culturally appropriated sombrero to the traditionally gendered pronoun. Which brings me back to Biden. The rap against the former Veep is that he's old, frequently puts his foot in his mouth, and occasionally says nice things about Republicans. Another way of putting all of that is that he's mature, unstudied, and not just another partisan hater. Also, he refused to beg forgiveness last month for being a tad too touchy-kissy. Maybe he should keep his hands in his pockets, but at least it means he isn't prepared to capitulate to the icy codes of personal decorum written by people who don't know the difference between exuberant human warmth and unwarranted sexual advances. In other words, Awesome, Joe Biden. Keep it going. Keep pissing off millennials. Keep shitting on them. Keep joking about unwanted touching and whatnot. And if you keep this up, you know, you're going to win me over as a conservative. <laughs> what an idiotic article to write. Like, this is in the most prestigious, arguably the most prestigious newspaper in America. And they published this garbage about him talking about how horrible millennials are. It's odd to me. It's bizarre. To shit on an entire generation for no good reason doesn't make sense. It's irrational. If anything, you should actually have sympathy towards millennials because, unlike you, we actually may see the end of the world with climate change because your generation didn't want to act. Now, one last line that I want to read here. He says, the sensible center of America, the sensible center of America, that is the people who choose presidents in this country, wants to see Donald Trump lose next year, but not if it means empowering the junior totalitarians of the left. Now is Biden's chance to make it clear he's just the man to fulfill that hope. So we are totalitarians. We get offended by everything and we just need to suck it up because we're being snowflakes. So it's only millennials that get offended by things. Um, well, let's look at some things that older people, um, particularly Republicans usually, are offended by. Because it's not just that millennials are the ones who get offended easily. Outrage culture exists on the left and the right. It's just that oftentimes there's a right-wing bias, so we don't acknowledge the right-wing SJWs. We only look at the left-wing SJWs because they found that that's a really effective tool at recruiting people to the right. Make fun of these college campus people with blue hair who are, you know, outraged over something or they think something about some stupid fucking movie or pop culture thing is offensive. I mean, let's focus on that. Let's ignore the fact that there are people in government currently who are trying to take us back to the fucking dark ages, who are passing outright bans on abortion, who are stripping away the barrier between church and state, trying to wage wars with two different countries. Let's focus on SJWs, though, because they're the real threat. But getting back to who's really offended here, let's look at the things that right-wingers are offended by. Kneeling during the national anthem, that's a really touchy subject for them. Donald Trump said that he'd be telling NFL owners to get that son of a bitch off the field. 
in response to Colin Kaepernick taking a knee. That's pretty snowflakey. They also get offended at blasphemy when you say mean things about Jesus. They, they can't even fathom that. If you say mean things about their God, they're going to flip their fucking shit. That's pretty snowflakey. Um, they get angry if we use profanity. Gay people kissing. Trans people existing. They get offended when people are offended. They get offended when we call out any sort of injustice whatsoever. They get offended by the type of music we like. If we like rap, then that's not real music to them. I mean, this is so petty. What an idiotic article to write. This is something that belongs on Facebook, on your personal status, not in the New York Times, which is supposed to be a news outlet. And I get that this is in the opinion section, but still, this is extremely idiotic and smarmy and pretentious. Like, who are you to tell us that we're the problem when, in society when your generation elected the politicians that fucked over my generation? You guys are the ones that started the war in Iraq. He supported that. You guys are the ones that implemented Reaganism. You undid the New Deal, which you benefited from, and now we don't have that. And now we try to go back to the New Deal era, and you call us whiny snowflakes. Like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> like, I don't understand how you can actually pass this off as intellectual, as something that is witty or insightful, when this is nothing more than bullshit. He's basically saying, look, I know that my generation fucked over your generation royally, and you guys will probably be extra poor while you witness the apocalypse that, you know, we refuse to do anything about. But stop complaining about it, snowflakes. Grow the fuck up. Well, how about this? Go fuck yourself.